Hi and welcome again to my friend the Holy Spirit, our deep dive series with gifts of Wadi love. We're going to start with a word of prayer today as the Holy Spirit teaches us who He is. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for your grace. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for who you are. Thank you for Jesus. Thank you for the cross. Thank you for your Holy Spirit. We ask you today that you may forgive us, cleanse us from all unrighteousness, O Lord. Create in us your heart and renew your spirit within us. Lord, this day we open our hearts to you, O God, that you may speak to us. Open our ears that we may hear. Open our understanding that we may understand. Give us the knowledge, wisdom, power, might, counsel, and the fear of God, O Lord. Holy Spirit of God, teach us. Let this seed that you plant in us today and this knowledge that you plant in us today go deep into the roots of our spirit, souls, and bodies that we will grasp it, O Lord, and that we will walk in the fullness of who you are. In Jesus' name we pray, believe, and receive with thanksgiving. Amen. Amen. So today we continue with our book series, My Friend, the Holy Spirit, and we are page 51. So we're going to actually... Let's do page 40. We'll start from 49. The very last um, paragraph. God the Holy Spirit is on earth now in this last testament and he's here to bring the chaos into order through Jesus Christ whom God the Father sent. So the Holy Spirit is the power of God. We, we realize that. And that is why no one can ever know God or Jesus without him because he's the one who illuminates them. You do not see him but you see his works what god the father has released to us through god the son the holy spirit is now on earth because this is the last testament you know how we have the old testament the new testament and now we are living in this testament yeah and in this generation is the most chaotic generations i believe from the beginning of creation so he's here to bring back the order the uh, into this chaos and to Help us to inherit this great sacrifice that the Father already gave us through Jesus. You know, he's here to perfect and complete the work which God began in us through the sacrifice of his son. To present to Jesus a prepared bride and to the Father mature sons and daughters. Philippians 1.6 says, Being confident of this very thing, that he who began a good work in you and me, he will complete it until the day of Jesus Christ. The Holy Spirit is preparing us for Jesus' return. That is why he's here on earth to perfect us in Christ. When the Word became flesh and he was given the name Jesus, the Holy Spirit did what he did in the beginning, but now in the Spirit. God saw that the human race was dark and void. The Father spoke Christ into the human race to bring light into the darkness within us, to restore man to himself. The Holy Spirit conceived Christ in Mary's womb and brought light into darkness and order into chaos, life into the dying world. There is no Holy Spirit without Christ. God gives the Holy Spirit to only those who receive Christ as their Lord and Savior. The Holy Spirit is a personal trainer for kingdom living. We do not know how to live in God's kingdom because we came from the kingdom of darkness so we've never been in god's kingdom laws and principles are different in every kingdom for instance if you go to a country you've never been to before you will need a map or someone to advise you and guide you on the laws of that land you will need to know what is required of you to live successfully and to prosper in that land to be a citizen of the country you will need to know what is expected of you and about the rights of that citizen you may need to read a book or take a class which informs you of the country's expectations of its citizens. But if you go to the country ignorantly, with no one to guide you, you will find yourself in trouble most of the time, absolutely. You will get frustrated living there in your own wisdom because you cannot live in a new country using the same laws of your previous country. If you do, you will struggle, you will fail, you will get in trouble with the law, you will be deported or voluntarily go back because you really cannot be able to handle the life there. You may even lose your life if you try to live in a country um, with laws of another country. 
Because you know what? People of God perish for lack of knowledge. And it's the knowledge of being a child of God. The knowledge of living in God's kingdom. The knowledge of being an inheritor of God's, um, you know, like the kingdom. Eternal life. Of what we are supposed to be inheritors of. Coheres with the king, with Christ. Likewise, if you try living in God's kingdom with the wisdom of the world, you will be frustrated. You will fail miserably. You will live under curses and never blessings. You will not know how to live in God's kingdom and succeed like Christ did. You will perish for lack of knowledge because you have re rejected the guidance of the kingdom guide, my friend, the Holy Spirit. This is the mistake many Christians make. We become citizens of the God's kingdom by the blood of Jesus, receiving him as our Lord and Savior. We even get the manual and the tool to, uh, for the kingdom, which is the Bible. But we do not ask to receive our tour guide and kingdom mentor. God, the Holy Spirit, is a must-have for us to be successful. It's like when a student ignores an instructor. They will definitely fail. You cannot enroll in school and in ignore your instructor. Now, we then go about God's kingdom in our worldly wisdom and wonder why we are not prosperous or blessed. No one can, sit in, can succeed in another country by using the former laws and rules and regulations of the previous country they were in. The Bible says in Titus chapter 3 that once we too were foolish and disobedient. We were misled and became slaves to many lusts and pleasures. Our lives were full of evil and envy and we hated each other. That is Titus 3.3, 3, right? But, this is verse 4, but when God our Savior revealed his kindness and love, he saved us. Not because of the righteous things we had done, but because of his mercy, he washed away our sins, giving us a new birth by the blood of Jesus and new life through the Holy Spirit. Did you hear that? He gave us new birth. How? When you're born, it's the, you're, you're changing the blood. You're now becoming, getting through the blood of Jesus is a new birth, right? So we are born of Christ. And new life, how do you get life? Life is through the Holy Spirit. He generously poured out the Spirit upon us through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Because of his grace, he made us right in his sight and gave us confidence that we will inherit eternal life. Where is the confidence that we will inherit eternal life? Only by the blood? No. Only by the new birth? No. By the new birth and new life. New birth is the blood. New life is the living waters. New birth is the blood of Jesus through Jesus Christ. New life is through the Holy Spirit. So you cannot ignore one and have another. You can be born again, new birth, but you don't have new life. New life begins when you are led fully by the Holy Spirit of God. New life is what gives you eternal life. New birth does not guarantee eternal life. I'm going to show you why I say that. Turn with me again. Um, and this is John 19. Turn with me, John 19, 33 to 34. John 19, 33 to 34. This is where um, Jesus was crucified. And when he was crucified, they wanted to get rid of these bodies quickly because their Passover was coming. And what they decided, they, they wanted the feast and they wanted to get rid of this before their Sabbath came. And they wanted to make sure that they were dead. The Bible says that Jesus' bones were never broken. So when they broke the first thief's uh, legs to make sure that they were dead, and the other one, when they came to Christ, something interesting happened. The Bible says, but when they came to Jesus, they saw that he was already dead. So they did not break his legs. 34 says, one of the soldiers, however, pierced his side with a spear. And immediately blood and water flowed out. What flowed out? Blood and water flowed out. When Adam was put to sleep and a bride was being prepared for him, Jesus took Eve from his side when he put Adam to sleep. Jesus, the second Adam, when he was put to sleep after he died, because when they came to him, they never pierced his side when he was alive. They pierced his side 
to make sure that he was dead, which is true, he was dead. So when they pierced his side, his bride came forth. And this bride, who is the church of Jesus Christ, was brought out of blood and water. The blood of the new birth and the water of new life. The Holy Spirit and Christ. You cannot have Christ and ignore the Holy Spirit. And you can never have the Holy Spirit without Christ. It's the blood and the water that makes up the bride. Do we understand? All right, walk with me. Let's go again to John 4, 13 and 14. Jesus replied, Anyone who drinks this water will soon become thirsty again. This is when Jesus was with the Samaritan woman at the well and he was asking for water and he told her that I will give you water that you will not thirst no more. And so Jesus said, anyone who drinks this water, the one that she was fetching from the well, will soon become thirsty again. But those who drink the water I give, the water I give, he never said the blood I give. He said the water I give will never be thirsty again. It will become a fresh bubbling spring within them, giving them what? Eternal life. What will give you eternal life? Not the blood. The water that he gives you will give you eternal life. If you don't have the Holy Spirit, you will be saddened to understand that you may miss eternal life. He gives this water is what Jesus, John the Baptist was talking about when he says that I baptize you with water, but there is one who will come and he will baptize you with the Holy Ghost and fire. Why is this Holy Spirit so important that even Jesus himself told, he told his disciples, you do not live here. Don't be witnesses. Don't go and try and witness. Don't go and try to tell people about me because you do not know me that well. You are not my witnesses. The Holy Spirit is my witness. So wait until he comes from on high. He cannot come because I'm here. But when I go, then the Holy Spirit will come. And he will teach you all things. He will lead you into all truths. He will tell you so many things that I want to tell you, but I don't have time. He is my witness. He knows me. He will take things that are from me. He will tell you things that are to come. He is the one who will lead you to me and to the Father. He is the one who will lead you to eternal life. The Bible says the water that I will give you will lead you eternal to eternal life. Turn again with me. I want to show you how my friend is a must-have and it is not negotiable. John chapter 7 from verse 37. John 7, 37. And this is Jesus just before he went to be crucified. The Bible says on the last day, the climax of the festival, Jesus stood and shouted to the crowds. You see, when Jesus shouts, there is something so important. See, you don't, you never, never shout to somebody unless you want them. It's something critical. Hey, listen, you want to, you want them to understand this. It is an emergency. You, they have to get this. When Jesus God is shouting, he's shouting because it's something that you got to know. You got to have. You have to understand. He never whispered. He never talked in normal tones. The Bible says Jesus stood and shouted to the crowds. Anyone. He never said some few people. He said anyone who is thirsty may come to me. Anyone who believes in me may come and drink. How do you get the Holy Spirit? Thirst and believe in Jesus Christ. You are thirsty, come to Jesus. You are believing in him, come and drink. For the scriptures declare, hey, he says, my daddy already has declared that rivers of living waters will flow from his heart. When he said living waters, the Bible continues to explain that he was speaking of the spirit who would be given to everyone believing in him. But the spirit had not yet been given. Why? Because Jesus had not yet entered into his glory. The reason why now we are entitled and we can have the Holy Spirit of God is because Jesus has already entered into his glory. 
The reason why the Holy Spirit did not get poured out to the disciples before Jesus left, it was because he was still here. The minute he entered into his glory, then we got to have the same helper. And that is why he said, it is good for me to go. Because if I go, then enter into my glory, you will get this exact same helper that has helped me throughout my ministry, throughout my life on earth. Holy Spirit is the living waters. Go with me again. And we're going to find out a little, a few things. I'm, I'm working in the medical field. And I want to sh share with you the blood and the water. And I want to tell you that in the blood, the liquid portion of the blood, plasma, has 90% water. The blood has 90% of water. In other words, the other 10% of the blood is protein molecules that includes the enzymes, clotting agents, immune, the, the, the immune um, system components, plus other uh, essential vitamins and hormones that actually are uh, taken around into your system. Why is it that the blood has 90% water? Because without that water, the blood cannot be able to be circulated into the system. See, the blood gives life. It has all the nutrients. But without the water, you can never receive these nutrients in your body. And that is why whenever you, ha you are in a hypovolemic shock, in other words, you are, have loss of water, extreme loss of water in your body, and you are so dehydrated, your organs will start shutting down. Why are they shutting down? Because there is no water enough to drive the blood that contains the oxygen, that contains what the nutrients that your, your cells need around into your body. Your heart cannot pump anything because there is not enough blood there. The water, you know, a human being, even earth, looking at earth, it is composed of mostly water. A human being, I'm going to give you a, a few, a few uh, stats here. An uh, adult person is composed of five liters of blood and about 42 to 45 liters of water, the body of a normal adult. And about 7% of the body weight is blood and greater than 50%, 60 to 70% is water. So this tells you that the blood cannot circulate in your body without the water. The blood of Jesus is not going to be useful to you without the water, the Holy Spirit of God, circulating this blood in your spirit, in your soul, in your body, in your being. The blood of Jesus is so powerful. It has everything you need, but the Holy Spirit of God is the one that drives this blood into your system to give you health and strength in your spiritual life. What The blood is the one that it delivers the nutrients, right? It also has the clotting factors. So in other words, the blood is very important. It detects foreign material. Sometimes when the, the, the doctor wants to, to know, do you have a certain disease? Do you have any infection? They will draw the blood. And the blood will tell them so many things. It has a lot of markers. It has a coagulation property that whenever you are cut, the blood forms a gel-like substance that stops and seals that cut. The blood as well regulates your body temperature. How? Because of the water that is there as well. So the water regulates your body temperature. The loss of blood, if you lose too much blood, you can go into a shock. So you must have the blood because life is in the blood. But the blood is not going to be very useful to you if you do not have the water. The water, I said, like I said, is the one that circulates the blood. We're going to look at, at a few things about the water. If you lose too much water, your kidney function will deteriorate. You might have seizures because why? Your electrolytes misbalance. Your cognitive function will go down. You see, when people are so dehydrated, they cannot even think very straight, right? Your blood pressure will go down. Obviously, circulation will, de will decrease and you can go into a shock. That can lead to death. So it is very important to have enough water to circulate the blood in your body. There is no life without the Holy Spirit. There is new life in the blood. The blood will give you new birth. 
the water, which is the Holy Spirit, will give you new life. Without the water, you might just have been born, yes, but you will die because you don't have the water to circulate this blood from your birth into your system. That is why the body of Christ has deteriorated so much. The body of Christ has gone down because we have ignored the Holy Spirit of God. The body of Christ is de dehydrated. The organs are shutting down. We are in a hypovolemic shock because we have ignored the Holy Spirit of God. And without the Holy Spirit of God, as much as you have the blood, as much as you have it, you're still going to get confused. There's a lot of confusion going on. Why? The electrolytes imbalance because you cannot have the, the, the balance in electrolytes. The nutrients cannot go into the system. Why? The blood cannot transport itself. It needs water to transport. You see, the blood was the one that took the children of Israel out of Egypt. But the water is the one that saved them from their enemies. You see, the water allows the body to absorb minerals. The water flushes out toxins from your body. The water regulates body temperature. The water lubricates your joints and your muscles. It gives you saliva. It gives you the tears. The water gets rid of every or excretes toxins out of your body. Without the Holy Spirit of God, you can never be delivered. You can never excrete the evil in you. You can never excrete the sin that is lacking in deep within you. Within your spirit and soul, you will never know the sins that are hidden. Those are the diseases of the spirit. Without the water, you will remain diseased, sick. Yes, you have the blood, you are alive, but you are sick all the time. Yes, you have the blood, but you're on life support. Why? Because you do not have enough water. Yes, you have the blood, but your organs are shutting down. Why? Because there is no circulation of the blood. The Holy Spirit is the one that circulates this blood. The Bible says that the blood of Jesus is the one that destroys every work of the kingdom of darkness. How will it destroy the kingdom of the work of darkness without being taken? Without being circulated? Without being introduced into the different organs, into the different systems of your spirit? Without the Holy Spirit, the blood of Jesus is void. Without the Holy Spirit, you cannot be able to live a healthy Christian life. Without the Holy Spirit, you're, you will shut down. You will be dysfunctional. You cannot be a witness of Christ. You can never fulfill your God-given task. You can never be everything God created you to be. You see, when God gives you and says, and Jesus keeps insisting, Telling the disciples don't go. Telling them it is good for me to go because if I go, the helper will come. Talking about the Holy Spirit every single time. Every single time he says, this is not the works that I do. Ah, it's the Holy Spirit who's telling me how to do it. Why? Because he's getting it from the Father and, and he's licking it to me. He's sharing with me what the Father wants me to do. He's directing me and telling me this is the right thing. This is the right way to walk in it. This is the right words to speak. Say this. Don't say this. Keep quiet here. Talk here. Respond this way. Don't respond that way. There is sin in here. Deal with it. The Holy Spirit in my life, he got rid of so many toxins that were in my spirit, in my soul, in my body. A lot of anger, a lot of rage, a lot of grudge holding, refusing to be corrected, always wanting to be right. Lying as a, as a lifestyle because everybody else is doing it. Ah, this is how you can live in this world. No, no, there is new life. You have new birth, but do you have new life? The children of, of Israel, they had new birth. Out of slavery, they were born into freedom, but they died. They did not get the new life because they ignored the Holy Spirit. Only two people, Caleb and Joshua, received the Holy Spirit of God, received new life, and they entered into the promised land. Do you have new life or just new birth? It is good to be born, but not everybody who's born lives a victorious life. 
lives a healthy life. There are many people who have been born, but they are so sick. They are so defeated. They are not living a victorious life. They are not living healthy. They are not enjoying life. Yes, they have been born, but they are not enjoying the life. Why? Because they are sick. Without the Holy Spirit, you'll remain sick. You cannot excrete the toxins. Your body will not have the nutrients that it deserves and needs. Your spirit will not have the nutrients. The, the enemy will still live in you. The diseased spirit person will still live in you and he, it will kill you. So the new birth that you received, will, you, you will still get destroyed in the wilderness. But if you embrace the new birth and the new life, then you will get into the promised land today. You might be there and saying, you know what? I never saw it quite like that. I never understood why the bride from the side of Christ, the Bible says it's water and blood. I never understood this. I never understood why God did not say that Caleb and Joshua were the only ones with the blood. No. He said they had a different spirit and that is why they are entering the promised land. They are entering and they have everlasting life. Jesus said everlasting life is through the spirit of God. If by the spirit you put to death the deeds of the flesh, you will live. For they that are, are led by the spirit of God, they are the sons of God. Not they that are, have the blood of Jesus are the sons of God. No, 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 no. They that are led by the spirit of God, they are the sons of God. The Holy Spirit will lead you to eternal life. Dear brothers and sisters, do you have new life? Or just new birth. May God help us. Let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray that this day, Lord, we will get tired of just being called Christians with a new birth, that we will understand it is a package of new birth and new life. Forgive us for the ignorance. Forgive us for ignoring new life and settling for just new birth. Lord, we have settled for new birth and we are still sick. We are still diseased. We are still defeated. We are still living in defeat and the enemy likes it because he can still destroy us like he destroyed the children of Israel in the wilderness because they ignored new life. Lord, anybody under the sound of my voice, my father, let us not ignore new life. Forgive us for ignoring new life. But we thank you this day for realizing and helping us to understand that without the Holy Spirit of God, we have no life. We only have birth. Lord, thank you for new birth and new life. You giving us the Holy Spirit was not a mistake. You just don't do things. There is a reason for it. Help us, Holy Spirit of God. To know you, to embrace you. Take all the nutrients through, for the blood of Jesus through our lives, our spiritual lives. That you're the one who, who introduces the oxygenated blood into our systems. And you take out the oxygenated blood and all the toxins out of our spiritual lives. That we may be ready, brides. That we may be prepared for Christ. Oh Lord, I thank you. For the word that has come forth with power. Everybody who has desired, accepted Christ today. May you fill us all with the Holy Spirit. Everybody who's desired the Holy Spirit. May we receive the Holy Spirit now in Jesus name. Anybody who has not accepted Christ as their Lord and Savior. Right now you can accept him. And say, Lord God, I believe in you. I receive you as my Lord and Savior. Forgive me. Get me. Give me this new birth. And I need this new life of the Holy Spirit. Fill me with your spirit this day. Thank you, Father, for answering our prayers. Thank you for new birth and new life. Holy Spirit of God, have your way. Take over. Feed us. Take out every toxin through, uh, from us. Anything that is not of you, flush it out. Flush it out. Use the blood of Jesus to circulate and take everything out. Flush out by the blood of Jesus and the fire of God.
to the glory and honor of your name. We thank you, Lord, for this beautiful and wonderful revelation of who you are in us. We bless your name. We worship you and adore you. Father, we thank you for Jesus. We thank you for the Holy Spirit. Thank you for you said that you will give us all things. That the Holy Spirit is a good and perfect gift. That the Holy Spirit is a gift from God to us. We receive the gift of new birth and new life. Help us, Lord, to live in the fullness of who you are. In Jesus' name we pray, believe, and receive with thanksgiving. Amen and amen. Thank you so much for joining me. And let us meet again next week and hear what the Holy Spirit has to say and get introduced to him in a new and fresh way. God bless you. I love you. Take care.